threatened, along with intensive Bolshevik propaganda took the Estonian soldiers fighting spirit to its critical low. It was likely that soon the Red Army would overrun Estonian defenses. That's when a new force emerged. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're doing a reaction to the Estonian War of Independence. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because tomorrow on February 24th, that is Estonia's Independence Day. So it's pretty topical. Again, I like to try and look up all the international holidays and try and pick out the main ones and do a reaction that pertains to that sort of holiday. So today we're doing Estonia. So again, I don't really know a whole lot about Estonia. I don't know a whole lot about the Eastern European or Baltic region in general. I learned most of it when I was actually over there in Romania and Bulgaria and from what a lot of y'all have actually told me. So I don't know a whole lot, so this will definitely clear up a lot of the confusion. I don't really even know when Estonia became a country. I know a lot of those, those countries in that area kind of got their independence in like the early 1900s, I think. But this video is pretty long, so I will just get right into it. I'll try not to stop it too much, because yeah, this is about 17 minutes, so we'll try and just watch on through and learn a little bit about Estonia's War of Independence. And it's animated, so that helps too. <laughs> Pretty interesting November animation. November 1918, Northeastern Europe. Russia has been defeated in the Great War and has suffered two revolutions that have led to the <laughs> communist Bolsheviks taking control of most of the country. Their okay. power is being contested by the political opposition and remnants of the Russian Imperial Army who have formed the White Guard. Many areas of the country are engulfed in a brutal civil war. The western borderlands right. of the Russian Empire have been taken over by Imperial Germany. But now Germany has been defeated in the west and is forced to abandon its conquests. German army prepares... Yeah, so I'm already learning something. I did not know that Germany was pushing Russia uh, to the east like this. Again, I've heard about like the, the whites and the reds or something. I, again, I don't really know. Um, I'm, I'm kind of just talking out of my butt here. But yeah, there's definitely a lot that I don't know. I know Finland had their civil war around this time as well. But when you have this, you know, land grab and all these people are going around doing things and you have people losing power over certain areas and you have these factions coming up or these countries trying to rise up out of those ashes. To leave the occupied territories as the Red Army musters its forces to begin the takeover. Meanwhile, many of the nations freed from the occupation don't want to be ruled by Bolsheviks and they prepare to resist the Reds. Hell yeah. Lacking armed forces, effective government and having politically divided populations, these new states right. attempt to hold back Red Army's advance. Hmm. One of them is Estonia. All of Estonian territory had fallen under German occupation. In the end of November, the Estonian government had only been in power for a couple of weeks and was struggling to okay. gather its forces. Meanwhile, yeah, again, it is pretty okay. So I'm learning a little bit about the cities here. I did not know Tallinn was Tallinn. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but okay. Yeah, learning a little bit about the geography here too. So just comparing it to the American Revolution here, or the American War of Independence, it's definitely hard for a country to try and resist such a massive superpower. But I mean, it's awesome when you see that these countries actually do succeed. So I mean, I'm guessing that's what we're going to see here since Estonia does exist today. While Red Army was assembling near the border, among them were pro-Bolshevik Red Estonian riflemen and the Red Fleet. Okay. Soon most of the German troops had left and the weak Estonian forces were unable to hold the line. Hmm. On November 28th, the Red Army attacked Narva. With this battle, the Estonian War of Independence began. Supported go. by the fleet, thousands of Red Army soldiers overran natural defensive positions in the forests of northeast Estonia. Okay. The Estonian army was constantly strengthened by new recruits, but morale was low and many men lacked the faith in victory. And yeah, it would be hard arms. to get motivated The next for line that. of defense was established on Kunda River. By this time, the Estonian forces had grown in manpower, but the raids broke through and captured the town of Rakvere. Wow. So it's kind of cool that we're able to see like the dates of everything happening here. But again, this was the 1918, so World War I time frame. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool seeing like all the new recruits coming up and being able to push them back a little bit. But now you see the Russians are pushing west a lot. But it's definitely going to be hard to get all these motivated recruits to join up and try and fight these Russians when you're trying to get your independence. That's a big, big motivation, trying to become your own country. But going against a force like this and yeah, it might be kind of hard. At the same time, the Estonian forces were preparing to defend the town of Tartu. On that part of the front, the Red mm. Army was numerically inferior, but Estonian troops were plagued by low morale. 
Bolshevik right. agitators managed to incite some units to rebel and the Estonian command lost the Good control grief. of the situation. Tartu fell to the Bolsheviks without any resistance and the Estonian troops retreated to the north. Okay. Having witnessed the lackluster performance of the Estonian forces, the Red Army Command came to the conclusion that the Estonian army would soon be defeated and they began reassigning units from Estonia to other fronts. Ah. However, the balance of power was slowly shifting in favor of the Estonian side. There we go. Despite of constantly being in retreat, the morale of the troops began to improve. Red Army continued to rely on its numerical superiority to push <laughs> the Estonian forces back, but the strength of the Estonian troops was on the rise and the resistance intensified day by day. Very cool. Again, just morale and motivation will do a whole lot when you're talking about conflicts like this. And you'll see all throughout history where the morale, you know, gets boosted because of one victory or, you know, whatever it is. And it's really crazy how much it can actually do. But we can see we have like the Estonian, I guess the Estonian had a pretty decent navy. You can see they're starting to push up here, trying to take some land. So I guess we're kind of seeing Russia's getting a little bit cocky as far as just moving people out of the area because they think that's just going to be a sure victory. But now when you have that morale boosting up, then yeah, once you see that that shift of power, and you, again, you see it with the American War of Independence, then the morale really starts getting high. On the 12th of December, the British Navy had arrived in the Estonian capital. They brought much needed arms, including oh. Lewis and Madsen light machine guns. Okay, I didn't know the Brits helped. To the Red Army. Hell the yeah. Royal Navy also captured two Red Fleet's destroyers and <laughs> transferred them to Estonian Navy. When the Red Army units reached only 40 kilometers from Estonian capital Tallinn, they had exhausted their strength and the Estonian oh. forces put an end to their advance. Huh. Meanwhile, the go. government of the Estonian southern neighbor Latvia had far greater difficulties. Latvia mm. had declared its independence under a nationalist government, but the Bolsheviks enjoyed a far greater degree of support among the local population. Mm. Therefore, the Red Army's elite units, the Red Latvian Riflemen, advanced through the country almost unopposed. The Latvian forces abandoned right. the capital city of Riga and retreated towards the west. In the westernmost corner of the country, they managed to establish a defensive line and were soon reinforced by German troops. On the okay. other hand, Estonia was... Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of other countries coming in and helping out these, like, Latvia and Estonia. So I guess the Brits are kind of like the French for the Americans during our War of Independence, because the French came in, helped us out during the Battle of Yorktown, and during a few other battles, of course. So it seems like the Brits are kind of the same way, just coming in, assisting, especially taking over some of the, uh, the Russian, you know, ships and whatnot. It's pretty clutch able to successfully mobilize and now many new units were arriving at the front. Estonian forces had also received help from its northern neighbor Finland. By the start of January the numbers yeah. of the Estonian forces and Red Army troops had become equal on the front. However, the Estonian forces were better equipped. In addition to possessing right. light machine guns, they had several armored trains and had gained the command of the sea. <laughs> Estonian army ah, began a counterattack. A the Navy will do a lot. By the armored trains coupled with an amphibious Gosh. landing forced the Red Army front line. Okay, hold on. I need to Google these armored trains really quick. Okay, well, here they are. Look at this, dude. This is sick. I didn't know you could weaponize a train. I mean, they're so limited in their mobility and whatnot. But look at this, like, artillery. They got some supplies. This dude has freaking... They have all these machine guns inside. This dude is a badass. Dude, imagine how badass you would feel riding on top of a train with a machine gun. Okay, well, that's probably the coolest thing that I've seen in a while. <laughs> I mean, get on, I'm weaponizing trains, hell yeah. Troops into a retreat. Their attempts to set up a defense near Rakvere failed when Estonian troops landed behind their lines at Kunda. The oh, raid army sneaky. forces became overextended while attempting to counter the threat from both sea and land. Many of their units became scattered or were captured during hmm. the retreat. However, soon the happen. front reached terrain more suitable for defense. The raids managed to hold off the Estonian frontal advance at Juhvi, but their position was flanked by a cavalry unit from the south and they... So I guess we can see all the Estonian units here. I'm not too familiar with Estonian units. The only ones I know are from a viewer who sent me... You can actually see back here. His name is Vic. If you guys are in the Discord, you know who Vic is. But yeah, he sent me those patches. Those are pretty much the only units I'm familiar with. So I'm guessing these are some other big Estonian units. I'm not sure if they're still prevalent today, but it's kind of cool how they actually marked it like that. They were forced to withdraw further. Now the Red Army occupied heavily entrenched positions at Sinimad Heights, which were impossible to bypass. 
Hmm. Estonian forces broke the deadlock by landing more than a thousand <laughs> men <laughs> behind go. the Red Army lines at Utrea. The nice. Finnish volunteers broke into the town of Narva and the encircled Soviet units at the front surrendered. Now Estonian Dude, forces nice established a defensive line on the Narva river. During the following months, the Red Army made several attempts to go on an offensive in this sector, but they didn't achieve much success. Hmm. Meanwhile, the Estonian High Command was gathering forces to recapture Tartu. There the armored go. train formations and Lieutenant <laughs> the trains. partisan battalion decided not to wait for reinforcements and retook the town with a surprise night attack. Wow. Now the Estonian forces were in Just position like to expel the Reds from southern Estonia. They directed the main attack towards the important railway junction of Volga. The Soviets had sent the Red Latvian riflemen against them and here okay. the best units of Estonia and the Red Army faced each other. Oh, With snap. heavy fighting, the Estonian forces and Finnish volunteers pushed the Soviets back and after a costly battle at Payu, they retook Volga. Meanwhile... Yeah, it's so cool to see like, I'm not, I'm not an officer so I'm not like really focused on the large scale tactics or the overall scheme of, of everything and moving all these units around like a chessboard, but it's really cool to see how you can utilize the terrain to your advantage. I mean, I can sort of appreciate that from my perspective because you can really use utilize that to, to be effective, even when it gets a larger force. So it's cool how we're seeing them utilize the, the terrain to their advantage. And it's cool to see how they're using, using certain tactics, like them attacking at nights, like that's a big thing. And they didn't have night vision or anything back in the day. But I mean, when you're attacking, when the enemy is least suspecting it and they're tired and they're sleepy and they're not really prepared, then you can get a lot done. And you can see they're pushing really well. Even if it's against a disciplined unit, you can get it done. But I think we have the Etsy scouts here, if I'm not mistaken. But, and then this also looks familiar, so, okay. Cool. Other units crossed the Estonian-Latvian border and took up defensive positions along the strategic Ruyena Valga narrow gorge railroad. On the eastern part of the front, <laughs> Estonians <laughs> were faced with demoralized Red Army troops mobilized from the war-weary Russian peasants. These units hmm. disintegrated before the Estonian army's advance, and soon the <laughs> Estonian forces reached Petchery, deep behind Red Army's lines. This Ooh. threatened the Red Army's units with encirclement, and they were forced to withdraw. Now yeah. the Estonian forces had reached their national border and their next goal was to establish forward defensive positions on Latvian territory. In the yeah. middle of February... So yeah, whenever you get a, like a big push like that, you need to reorganize and set up a good defense just so you can get ready for any counterattacks so you're not losing any of the land you just took. So that makes a lot of sense. It's cool how we're seeing like this just like line moving, but of course you can see the like the days up here and whatnot. So you, it... Probably took a while to get all of this done, but it's kind of cool to get a good appreciation for all of this happening and how many days it actually took for that line to actually push a little bit lower. They continued their advance. The Red Army had received large reinforcements and repelled the Estonian troops back into their territory. After okay. the initial defeats, the Red Army's forces had been greatly strengthened and now they were preparing to launch a large-scale offensive. All However, right. the Red Army formations in Latvia and on the Pskov front lacked coordination, which allowed Estonian forces hmm. to defeat them one by one. The Soviets in the east began their offensive first by launching attacks from the front and over the frozen lake Ilamierv. After their advance okay. had been fought to a standstill in March, they were joined by their Latvian comrades, who achieved some success in the south. Fighting okay. against the Estonian troops stretched the Latvian Red Army's resources, and this allowed <laughs> the Latvian white forces and German troops to recapture right. most of Western okay. Latvia. So now we're seeing like a little pincer thing going on here. So you have the Estonian forces up at the top, and then you have the, the Latvian white forces. So I'm guessing that's like with the Germans and whatnot. So they're starting to move in here. So yeah i guess again it we're only like we're not even halfway through the video and you can see all the days but so i'm guessing the russians had a pretty solid defense for this last little bit after having stopped the reds estonian forces counterattacked and retook most of the lost land in the south then with a concentrated assault awesome. carried out by armored trains they recaptured petchery <laughs> and stabilized the front lines then the fighting was interrupted by the spring thaw during the winter, ah. the Soviets had been preparing for a major attack on Estonia and had organized new units. Now they were deployed on the front. All Here we red go. Estonian, Latvian and Russian troops on that part of the front were organized into a formidable Estonian Red Army. On April 17th, Dang. the Reds embarked on their most serious attempt to conquer Estonia. Due to the lack of ice cover, the Red Army was unable to attack over the lakes and their attacks in the east were channeled in a small corridor and repelled. 
However, right. in the south, the Soviets' numeric superiority pushed the Estonian forces slowly back. The Estonian oh. I really love these pictures here. It really gives you a much better appreciation for what's going on. But we're seeing like, so right now the Russians have about 19,000 men and the Estonians have about 9,000. So the Russians have, you know, more than double. You kind of get desensitized to the statistics and the numbers when you start talking about like World War One and World War Two and all the casualties. But when you're just talking about this specific conflict, you get a much better appreciation when you see the numbers get boosted up and then they go down again. And then, you know, this force comes up with new men and then those go down. Like it, it, it kind of desensitizes you in a way just because you're just looking at it like numbers. But you can bet those guys are going through some crazy stuff there. An army had used up most of its reserves and their defenses were stretching to a breaking point. Only some kilometers from Vuru, the advancing raids were temporarily stopped. Now the raids attempted to break the stalemate by a diversionary attack in the mm. west. There the Soviets lacked numerical superiority, but the morale of the Estonian soldiers was low. Estonian troops were deployed in Latvian territory, but they didn't have the will to fight abroad and were also exposed right. to propaganda by local Bolsheviks. The red Latvian men attacked and pushed the Estonian forces back over the national border, but they lacked the reserves for a follow-up attack. Eventually the discipline in Estonian units was restored and they counterattacked, recapturing all of the lost territory. Wow. Meanwhile the onslaught of the raids <laughs> on the Buru continued. Several weeks of unceasing fighting along with intensive Bolshevik propaganda took the Estonian hmm. soldiers fighting spirit to its critical low. It was likely that soon the raid army would right. overrun Estonian defenses. That's when a new force emerged. Oh snap! Since the beginning of the war, many former officers of the Russian Imperial Army had been gathering in Estonia with the goal of fighting the Bolsheviks. By the beginning right. of May, they had organized themselves into the Northern Corps, an elite formation of 3,000 men. On May 13, they executed a thoroughly planned offensive on the Narva front. Nice. Their forces penetrated deeply behind Red Army's Holy lines cow. through unfavorable <laughs> terrain and broke into the rear of main Soviet formations. Dude. In support of their offensive, Estonian Navy landed the Ingrian battalion behind Red Army's lines. The Soviet units, being threatened wow. with encirclement, fled in disarray and the resistance to the whites collapsed. No. It's really awesome hearing about these like specific elite units just getting so much done like we had that one specific unit just pushed all the way out here and you can see looking looking at this terrain we have like what well, looks like maybe mountains or marsh areas you have you know all these rivers and whatnot so pretty bad terrain but when you have an elite unit that, that's disciplined they can really get stuff done and we also saw down where they are saying that they weren't as coordinated and they were losing that land. So it's really cool to see. And I'm sure they have some really incredible stories from just that offensive right there. Now the Northern Corps reached into striking distance from Petrograd, the old imperial oh, capital. The Soviet command could not afford to lose Petrograd under any circumstances. Reserves and forces from other fronts were scrambled together and thrown against the whites. However, right. many of these units had mixed loyalties and defected to the Northern Corps. Ultimately, nice. the Soviets mustered large amounts of troops and stopped the white forces. Hmm. Many of these units were taken from Estonian fronts, and so the Red Army's position there became dangerously weak. After the Northern Corps offensive into Russia, some commanders of the Red Estonian riflemen were coming to the conclusion that the Reds were going to lose the war. They decided right. to defect to the Estonian side. There you Estonian go. command decided to use this opportunity to capture Pskov. The defectors paralyzed the Red Army's command, which allowed units to advance quickly into the Red Army's rear. Right. Many there you go. When you start talking about the propaganda and the morale and the motivation, if you get people to defect, especially people who are like experienced, experienced officers and whatnot, yeah, you can just get stuff like this. And if you get like a little foothold like that, then you can really start moving up and getting some more stuff done. It's cool to see an animation, but again, it doesn't give you the best appreciation for these individual events. So I'm sure I'm sure you could write a, an entire book or multiple books just on this little thing right here where you have those defecting officers going over. Many Soviet units got the false impression that most of the Red Estonian riflemen had defected and fearing encirclement, they fled without offering resistance. Wow. The Estonian white troops entered Pskov. The Red Army in Latvia had also been overextended. The there German and Latvian forces exploited this by taking Riga with a surprise attack. Then yeah. the Estonians broke through the Red's front near Vuru and advanced deep into Red Army's rear, threatening to cut a bulk of the Latvian Soviet wow, army dude. off from Bolshevik Russia. On dog so again, it's cool to see these like massive like offensive right here, because then again you can see they're sort of doing this 
encirclements of this terrain here and then they can start laying up defenses here so it's really awesome to see this again it is only 1919 this started in 1918 so this is happening over the course of you know maybe a year or two years and you're just seeing a lot of crazy stuff i mean there ha you have all these forces moving across this much terrain it's just it's really cool to see and again i want to read some some books or maybe some articles that go a little bit more in depth on these specific offenses because it just looks badass i'm sure there's some cool stories over river they linked up with lithuanian troops cutting off the red army units in lithuanian Central troops now the latvian red army had suffered a major defeat and lost much of its strength however a new danger was emerging from the south the German forces operating in Latvia had deposed the Latvian nationalist government and set oh. up a puppet government consisting mm. of the local Baltic German nobility. Estonia continued to support the previous Latvian government. Many Latvian units right. loyal to the nationalist government were already serving under Estonian command. Estonian and German forces met near the Latvian town of Cesis. The German forces consisted of Baltic Landeswehr, a unit of Latvian Baltic Germans, and the Iron Division, consisting of volunteers from Germany. They were well equipped, okay. but Estonians had the numbers and very high morale. This conflict was seen... I mean, that's pretty incredible that they had that high morale when you see like the, the German forces or these, you know, this, this German unit going against them now, because now they're fighting two, de two separate nations in, in a way. But it's kind of cool that they actually had the morale to go against them. Yeah, they had the numbers, but yeah, that, that must be kind of scary when you have these German soldiers going against them now. Seen by many Estonian soldiers as the high point of the centuries-long power struggle between the local Baltic German landowners and Estonians, and they were eager to take part in the fight. The ah, Germans okay. attacked a Latvian nationalist then. unit and pushed it out of the town. After the initial clashes, the military missions of the Entente countries attempted to broker a peace between Estonians and Germans, but the talks failed. Hmm. On July 19th, the Germans continued the offensive and the Baltic Landeswehr broke through the Estonian lines. However, the advance of the Iron Division was repelled and then the Estonians counterattacked oh, at Cesis. The German forces went into full retreat. Look at Their that. attempt to reach the Goya so River was thwarted, and only on the entrenched positions before Riga did they manage to stop the Estonian advance. However, the arrival wow. of Estonian fleet in the mouth of Daugava River threatened to cut off the Germans' path of retreat. Under the pressure of the military missions of the Entente countries, they were forced to sign an armistice and abandon their positions. The nationalist government... Wow, dude. Again, like, you saw that crazy push right there, and... Again, it is an animation. You can't get a good appreciation for how fast it actually happened. But look at all these units just concentrated on this one effort. And then you have the Navy pushing in. And I mean, yeah, once you have the momentum and the, you know, the, the push and people are in a retreat and whatnot, it makes it a little bit easier. But again, just look at all these units taking part in this one offensive here. It's just so cool. Until Latvia was restored and continued to be allied with Estonia until the end of the war. Nice. Meanwhile, the Red Army had gathered a strong force and began pushing the Northern Corps troops back along the whole front. The situation was especially critical near Pskov, where the Reds had large superiority. Hmm. After defeating the Germans, Estonian units began to arrive to prop up the White Army's defense. There Estonian command ordered its forces to push the Red Army deeper into Russia in order to create a buffer zone between Estonia and the Soviets. The attack right. was initially successful, but Estonian soldiers lacked the will to fight abroad, and their performance suffered. Yeah, the yeah. advance of the Estonian and White Army was stopped short of their objectives. The Red Army counterattacked, directing its main effort towards the Estonian Army's communications and its path of retreat. Hmm. At the same time, the Soviets pushed the Estonians and Whites back from the front. When the threat of being cut off became too real, the Estonian forces abandoned Pskov and retreat. Oh, okay, now it's looking kind of bad. So again, it's really cool to see how, I mean, even then they had, you know, all these units pushing in to Russia and now they're pushing back. So it's pretty incredible, like from both sides, being able to get all this stuff arranged and make this happen. But you can appreciate the mindset of them not being super motivated to fight abroad. And again, it is for that buffer zone to, you know, really lock down their security as far as keeping the land they actually had. But yeah, fighting abroad is a completely different thing than just taking the you know the land that that was yours and that would belong to your families and whatnot treated to the fortified positions on estonian territory for the rest of the war this part of the front became stable and only attacks of diversionary character were attempted here hmm. the final act of the war took place in the north 
Here, the Northern Corps had fought off the Soviets and increased their strength. The Dang. corps now consisted of 16,000 men and was renamed to Northwestern Army. Good Despite grief. the increase in strength, the situation was becoming desperate for the Russian whites. Hmm. They were in danger of losing their base of supply as Estonia was in the process of making peace with the Soviets and the Allies were about to stop delivering the supplies. Ah. The only fighting chance for them was conquering Petrograd with an army that wasn't fully <laughs> prepared. First, they carried out a diversionary attack towards Pskov, thus diverting some Soviet troops. Oh, snap! Petrograd. That's a big move right there. Then the main forces of the Northwestern Army launched an all-out attack on Petrograd. The Reds' defenses collapsed and the Whites closed their distance to huh. the city. Wow. The Estonian Army had its own goal in this offensive. Their units were tasked with the capture of Krasnaya Gorka naval fortress in order to trap the Russian fleet at Petrograd. Yep. It seemed that the city was about to fall, but then Leon Trotsky arrived there and began feverishly organizing a defense. <laughs> As the Red Army reinforcements were trickling to Petrograd by rail, the White Army's advance became bogged down and finally ground to a halt on the approaches to Petrograd. Dude, okay, that offensive, I'm sure that's that has to be the most like famous offensive of the you know, Estonian War of Independence. I could be wrong. If you are from Estonia, then definitely let me know what is the most like pivotal or most well-known offensive or battle that took place during the War of Independence. But now you're talking about strategic targets like this naval installation and this port and yeah. So now it's going to get very, very crucial. This is like the crunch time as far as them making sure they do everything right so they're not losing what they just did. Now the Soviets counterattacked and began pushing the Whites back. The Northwestern Army, exhausted by continuous combat and having lost mm. their hope for victory, began to lose its ability to fight. Their troops retreated towards the Estonian border. Meanwhile, peace negotiations were being held between Soviet okay. Russia and Estonia. Nice. In order to secure a more advantageous border, the Red Army was ordered to capture the Estonian city of Narva. Hmm. However, the Estonian forces had established extensive fortifications <laughs> along the national border. Red good, Army attacked these positions in strength, but the defenses were well prepared. The battles here resembled the ones smart. in the Great War on the Western Front. The Reds lacked hmm. artillery to achieve a breakthrough and took large casualties while pushing slowly forward. During November and December, Estonians and remaining Northwestern Army units repelled numerous Red Army assaults on their positions and were able to hold their ground. After the Red Army had exhausted its strength, a truce was finally signed on January 3rd, 1920. The 1920. Estonian War of Independence was over. It was officially concluded on February 2nd, 1920, with the signing of Tartu Peace Treaty between the Republic of Estonia and Soviet Russia. All right. With the Peace of Tartu, the fighting in Northeastern Europe hmm. started to come to an end. Lithuania made peace in July, Latvia in August, and Finland in October 1920. Poland followed in March. 1921. Okay. So finally, peace came to Eastern Europe. It lasted for 20 years and then the region was engulfed in another <laughs> war. We'll look into it in our next Jeez. video. Subscribe not to miss it and thanks for watching. That was an awesome video. You can really appreciate what an animation can do for your understanding of something. Again, I'm not I'm not going to be an expert of Estonia or even the, their war of independence by any means, but just watching this and being able to recall stuff and just being able to to have a time frame because I didn't even know when Estonia became, you know, it's an independent country. So it's awesome to learn a little bit about this. So I do hope you guys appreciate it, especially if you are from Estonia, you know, enjoy your, your Independence Day. Let me know how y'all actually celebrate your Independence Day because, yeah, I mean, you, I'm sure everybody knows Americans go pretty hard with their Independence Day. July 4th is all about the fireworks and celebration and just getting pretty wild. So let me know how y'all actually celebrate it there. Now, I imagine it looks a lot like uh, like this, but let me know if I'm wrong on that one. <laughs> so again, I do hope you guys appreciate it. This was really cool to check out. I do like checking out the historical stuff because it gives me a lot more knowledge and understanding of how y'all's countries actually came into existence and what your history actually is. Because it's cool to check out the militaries and whatnots, but getting a good appreciation for their history really allows you to get into their mindset a little bit better. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't know anything about the Estonian War of Independence, hopefully you learned something because I definitely did. And that's you know the awesome thing about doing these reaction videos and especially having a community like you guys because you can recommend this stuff. You can tell me about your experiences or your ancestors' experiences. And it's just super cool to hear about all that. So I do appreciate it. Thank you for sharing all that stuff with me. And thank you for the awesome recommendations. 
I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. I'll see you on the next one.